Hey everybody, welcome to another WLAN Pi video. This time around, we're gonna talk about how to connect to your WLAN Pi. So uh, Jerry, what are the three main ways, before we kind of dive into each one and talk about exactly what they're useful for, how they work, what are the three main ways that you can connect to your WLAN Pi? Yeah, so we're gonna cover the uh, direct connectivity as I like to call it, the OTG connection. Um, that's where you're going to physically connect that WLAN Pi into your uh, host device, your PC or Mac. And then we're also going to talk about using it on like a local area network um, and then also uh, remotely accessing the WLAN Pi could be globally, um, you know, next door or whatever. Um, so those three methods. And we talked a little bit in the first video about directly connecting your WLAN Pi to your, your Mac, your, your PC, or your iPad too is actually a viable option for those of us that have iPads. We have iPads here, and I like using my iPad as much as possible, but we touched on this just a little bit about how that single USB-C cable or USB-A, if you plug a little adapter into it, right. uh, can power your WLAN Pi, but, uh, but sounds like you're telling us that you can also use this as a data connection as well. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. So if you want to interact with the WLAN Pi uh, for various reasons of, you know, doing a packet capture, scanning a network, whatever uh, utilities you're wanting to run, you can interact with the WLAN Pi uh, locally, right? So you can, you know, no Ethernet connection required or anything like that. All we need to do is make this connection into your computer. So I'll actually go ahead and do that now. So that starts uh, booting up. And then what we're going to do is once that uh, boots up, we'll see uh, I'm going to be using my Mac, but you could be on a Windows device or, as Joel mentioned, uh, an iPad Pro with a USB-C connection. Um, but once this uh, boots up, we're actually going to see that uh, show up on my end here. So I'll go ahead and share that. So, Jerry, while you're sharing that, uh, what kind of device does it appear as on the host, you know, PC, Mac, or iPad? What does it show up as? Uh, so on the Mac, it's going to actually show up as this RNDIS gadget. I read and labeled mine here, so it actually shows up as WLAN Pi. Um, but yes, it'll show up as this RNDIS uh, gadget on both the uh, Windows and Mac side and even the iPad side. Uh, that's what I believe it uh, is labeled as. So okay. it so basically, just, oh, sorry, yeah. go ahead. Go ahead, Nick. No, I was going to just, yeah, for, for, for clarity, if you plug your WLAN Pi into your Mac or, or other uh, computing device, if if the con data connection is established correctly, you would expect to see a device that looks a bit strange that says RNDIS slash gadget. So yep. network That's gadget? What, yep. what is the, what's the rest of the text there? Uh, looks like, yeah, uh, RNDIS oh, Ethernet, Ethernet gadget. gadget. Yeah. Okay. So basically it is a, it is a USB Ethernet adapter in, yep probably the essence of that, probably not actually, but it essentially becomes a USB ethernet adapter. And then we can talk to the WLAN Pi using standard network protocols, because as far as your Mac is concerned, it's just a network device, right? That's right. Yep. Cool. Yeah. So if we actually look at it from the standpoint of, uh, if we get uh, a terminal window up here, so you'll notice that um, we've got currently uh, we've got uh, the IP oh, address of the WLAN Pi. We can't see your terminal because you're only sharing the network. Well, let uh, me share the window. terminal then as well. <laughs> Beautiful, um, got it. So you can see here on the uh, network preferences here, we've got the IP address of my uh, host device. So this is my the IP address that actually the WLAN Pi handed out to my MacBook. So there's actually a DHCP server running on the WLAN Pi that issues out that IP address. And that makes it really easy for us to connect it. Actually, if you could see the front of my WLAN Pi display, it actually has its IP address printed on there, which is actually uh, a 169 address. So you might see that and think, uh, oh, it's, you know, doesn't have an IP, you know, we're used to seeing that kind of link local IP address as like when DHCP isn't working. In this case, it's actually intentional because we don't want it to actually route any uh, actual network traffic or internet traffic across this IP. Um, so that way it stays out of the way, we used an actual proper link local address for it. So if I want to connect into the WLAN Pi, it's going to be this SSH uh, WLAN Pi uh, at 169.254. Dot 42.1 dot and you can use uh, you know putty whatever your SSH client is and here it's because I've connected to a different WLAN Pi that it's giving me this uh, this error here but we can clear that pretty quickly it's just basically saying that uh, this could be like a malicious uh, device and, 
anybody that has used SSH for any period of time has probably run into this before. Pretty common thing that you, yeah. you will not see the first time you try to d connect to your WLAN Pi. That's so right. So yeah, actually, if we just deal. clear that, this is normally the first time you'd go to connect, you'd see a message like this. Um, and we're just going to say yes to allow it to continue uh, and, and create that profile. Um, now, Jerry, a question I have really quick is, is the, is the WLAN Pi, if you're, if you're connecting it directly to your Mac, your PC, your iPad, is the IP address of the WLAN Pi always 169.254.42.1? Correct. Yeah. So the local connection, that link local connection over the USB is always the same. It's a static IP. Um, another cool thing now that you mentioned that is we're also running uh, the uh, MDNS, the Avahi uh, service on the WLAN Pi. So I don't even need to necessarily know that uh, IP address. I could actually connect uh, if your if your host device supports this uh, Avahi. Uh, I can actually connect to it using the WLAN Pi uh, dot local. Now I actually have another. WLAN Pi device on the network uh, that's running that, so it actually connected to that one. But yes, if that's the only uh, WLAN Pi device you have, you can actually connect to it using the uh, WLAN Pi .local, uh, address. Without any extra config required. Correct, yeah. Does that work on Windows or is that just a Mac OS thing? Uh, it does work on Windows as long as you have that MDNS service uh, installed or running. I think now with the latest version of Windows 10 that is baked in, um, if it isn't baked in, you can install like uh, the Bonjour service, for example, from like Apple, and that would add that functionality to a Windows device as well, like an older uh, Windows version. Gotcha, gotcha, okay. Um, so yeah, let's uh, just switch back over to this other WLAN Pi that's actually locally connected to my computer. And here we can see that now we're connected to this WLAN Pi and I can access uh, you know, any files and, and uh, services that would be running on here. So if I wanted to start Profiler, for example, we'll get into that in a later session. Um, that's all I need to do to actually start up like the Profiler service, for example, to, to create a device profile. Now, is there anything else that you want to demonstrate using SSH right now? Or should we start talking about other ways that you can interact with the WLAN Pi when it's connected to your machine locally? I think we'll keep it pretty high level for the sake of this session of just, you know, how do you actually access the WLAN Pi, right? How do you connect to it? Um, so that's the OTG uh, connection. Now, the other thing that we could do with the OTG connection before we move off of that is you'll notice we've got this, uh, you know, web address that's, uh, you know, now that I start the profile, you can see that there is a web server that's running on the WLAN Pi. So we could go to like, uh, you know, the I, that same IP address and you'll actually see we can hit the, uh, the WLAN Pi from here. So um, if I ran a speed test now, we're just doing a speed test over that USB connection. So that doesn't really do us a whole lot of good there, but I could access things like uh, the profiler results. Uh, I also could, uh, if I had an ethernet cable plugged into here, I'd see all sorts of network information here. Um, and then I, so I could go over to like the admin side to uh, do some administration on the WLAN Pi as well. Gotcha. So okay, you don't so necessarily have to use a terminal to interact with the WLAN Pi. There are some tools available via web browser. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Nick? No, you beat me to it. Ah, sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So what's the, uh, what's the next way that you can connect to a, uh, to a WLAN Pi? All right, so the next way that we can connect to it is, uh, you know, depending on how we're powering it, I'm actually just going to take this uh, you, uh, this Ethernet connection that I just happen to have, uh, you know, laying around here, and we're going to plug the uh, WLAN Pi into that. And then I'm also going to grab my battery pack, which we talked about in the last session here, and I'm going to plug in my uh, USB-A and just plug in the that same connection that we just used for that OTG connection. Uh, we're now removed it from the OTG side, and now we've got an Ethernet connection plugged in here. It's now powering up uh, via the battery pack, and after about you know 30 seconds or less, uh, we should see the screen come on, and then we know we're ready, and it'll display its IP address uh, that it got from DHCP on the network that I'm connected to. Gotcha. Um, now you could okay. you could connect the WLAN Pi to your laptop and you know, remotely admin or administer it through the through USB, but you could also connect it to the network. So you could actually connect it from these two sources if you wanted to, right? Yep, yep. Um, so you can see here, it's getting its IP address now and uh, should display on the screen. There we go. So now it's got its uh, IP address. 
Um, actually, there we go. Now it just got its IP address. And uh, now I can connect to that actual LAN IP address uh, from my computer, either wirelessly or wired from my computer side. So I'm just gonna set that down there for now. And uh, now we can access the same, basically the same method. I'm not gonna repeat it, but it would be the same process as we did the OTG, just using that local uh, IP address. Nick, did you have a question? No, no, no. Uh, just uh, just for, for clarity sake, uh, we, we're now just, we're just giving power to the WLAN Pi this time and we're gonna connect to it through the ethernet port. Yeah, and you know what? Let's do this just for the sake of uh, showing the IP address. Let me share my screen here. So I've got that IP address plugged into my web browser now, refresh the page. So remember before we connected over the link local IP address, now that I'm connected over the LAN ethernet, I can actually do a proper speed test. This is now testing the speed between my host device, which is my MacBook and the uh, WLAN Pi. And here you can see over the wired connection that I have between those going through the network, any hops and stuff in between, um, that's the throughput that I'm getting uh, and seen through uh, through to the WLAN, WLAN Pi. So you can test endpoint to endpoint. This isn't going over the internet or anything like that. Oh, Jerry, maybe you were just very quick off the mark, but you grabbed the IP address just off of the screen. That's right. Yeah, okay. So yeah. I think I missed you, you typing it out. See that on there, but uh, oh, yes, yeah, the yeah. IP address is displayed on the front panel display there. Um, so that's automatic. So that's a, a, a pretty handy thing. It also is showing that I am getting a gigabit connection. So it shows on the front panel display there um, that I did uh, negotiate at uh, one gigabit per second. So will it show if like you only have 100 megabits per second or something like that? Will it show? Yep. How about, exactly. do you know about 10? Will it show 10 megabits per second? Will you uh, ever see I that? haven't. I haven't tested that, but I have definitely seen a hundred. Um, yeah. But yeah, I suppose I could uh, force like uh, some network equipment to negotiate at 10 and plug it in and you should be able to see that. It's, it's supposed to be able to sense what that negotiated and displayed. Uh, okay. displayed what about on the what about 10 gigabit? Uh, it does not do 10 gig, no. <laughs> okay, all right, fair enough. <laughs> we, haven't, uh, we haven't crossed that uh, yet, but yeah, that would be, uh, that's, that's a future WM Pi. How about fiber? Does it have a fiber transceiver on it? It does not. No <laughs> fiber transceivers uh, yeah. available. <laughs> Ridiculous. What is this? 2005? Come on, That's Jerry. Right. That's right. Unbelievable. We need, we, need to, we need to update it with a, a fiber uh, GBIC in there. Fiber well, molecule. Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay. Back, so, back on topic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll try, Nick. We'll try. So, uh, uh, so speaking of it not being 2005 anymore, uh, if you needed to remotely access a WLAN Pi, um, uh, can you talk a little bit about maybe really quickly what the potential use cases would be and then, and then can we go into how to actually accomplish some kind of remote connection from, you know, not the same local area network, but, you know, maybe it, it may be uh, to a WLAN Pi, it's a couple hours away, maybe a WLAN Pi, it's on the other side of the globe. So how are you guys uh, with your familiarity to zero tier? I know at this point, almost nothing about it. So I would love to get Same a quick introduction on it. Uh, so zero tier is pretty, uh, you know, when it comes to technology, I think some pretty exciting, uh, pretty amazing kind of technology and simplification of, you know, when we talk about like VPNs and things like that. So uh, if you're not familiar with zero tier, highly recommend checking it out, zero tier.com. And uh, you can download this, you can get started with it for free. You can have up to like something like 50 members, you know, uh, as part of your zero tier network for free. And then it's like 50 bucks a month after that. But really cool for, you know, whether it's, um, you know, home use or business use, you know, they've got some really cool options here. This gives you a quick overview of kind of how it works. But yeah, it's basically creating this, uh, it's combining the kind of technologies of both VPN and SD-WAN and doing it in a super simple, easy to get up and running with uh, solution. Uh, it's all cloud managed and stuff. So I've already created my zero tier account. I even created a uh, zero tier network, but literally it's- Okay, it's hang fun. on. Can you, so you've created a network here. Can you just describe, so zero tier is a, is a service and yep. you have created a network on the zero tier network. You've created cloud. your own network on their cloud. Okay, and now you, you're you able to join it from your laptop and you can send an invitation to other people. Yes, and then, yes. 
and the and the result of all of that is is what yeah so we've created this uh network here so literally just created the network gave it a name it gives it a random name to start with i gave it a name so we knew what it was it already filled all this uh you know the more technical info out for me on the ip sides and everything everything from a default standpoint works for our use case here um, you can manually add a member or we'll show you how to do it more in an automated way um, but here we've already created these uh, these two nodes here on the network um, but yeah if we wanted to uh, show what that looks like on the you know WLAN Pi side let's just go ahead and SSH into the WLAN Pi that we have here um, so I'm going to connect back to that same IP address which if we look at the display here we can see uh, so 12 and I've already installed zero tier on here but it's literally a single command um, if I go to notes here yeah it's literally you run this kind of a command here uh, it's all on the downloads on the zero tier page I already ran it so it's installed and now all I would have to do is join this uh, to my zero tier network which is the network ID up at the top here and on the WLAN Pi, so this is the WLAN Pi that's sitting right over my shoulder here. Um, all I would have to do is do a sudo uh, zero tier CLI and then the join and the network ID. And this is already uh, joined to that network. So um, it still just tells me it's joined okay. And then if we scroll down, we would see that as a new uh, node attempting to connect to our zero tier network. Now, I've already authorized that by checking this box here so we can see that that device is authenticated uh, and we can see uh, the managed IP there that it can uh, can use. All right, so now if we go back to uh, our zero tier side of things, um, we should be able to uh, reach that. Anybody else that's part of that zero tier network uh, would be able to reach that WLAN Pi to access that, to do a scan, do a packet capture, whatever they want to do from really anywhere in the world. So Nick, being on the other side of the, the pond here from me over in the UK, um, Nick, do you want to attempt to uh, access my WLAN Pi here, maybe do a scan? Yeah, absolutely. Because we could demonstrate you accessing it via zero tier, but that's not super exciting because you're in the same room as <laughs> the WLAN Pi. Uh, okay, right. so if I... I'll share my screen, this one here. And now, uh, you see my screen? We do. Yep. Perfect. And so I, I've, I've already installed the zero tier Mac Package. client, which yeah. gives me a fairly good GUI, right? The, if you're on Windows, you don't get the same GUI uh i'm not sure i believe they do have a gui okay. on the windows side i am mostly have just used it on linux and uh the mac side okay okay fine so i've got this icon up here in my menu bar and we added this network already but when we when we did this the first time i went to join network and then i put in that network id that i received when you sent me a, an invitation so right now i can just click on this one here and I think that's it. We can go to yep. network details and just double check that we are connected. Mm -hmm. So what would you like me to do now? Shall I, shall I try so pinging not, your so, WLAN pipe yeah, first? So just to make sure everybody understands what we did there is we've created this um, layer two uh, SD-WAN overlay now uh, between myself and Nick and between our network. So essentially, um, Nick being in the UK, me being in the US, he's able to access my WLAN Pi that's part of that um, zero tier network as if we're both physically on the same network, uh, like a layer two network. Um, so yeah, if you wanna just try pinging um, that IP address, um, that would be an uh, easy way to start. Can I just confirm that it is 192.168.195.208? That's right, yep. All right. So it's a local uh, IP address, and there we go. You can see the tunnel's up, and he's able to reach and, and ping that uh, um, over that LAN IP address. Wow. And this presumably, yeah, I, I was going to say, this would also be potentially quite useful if we wanted to do a, a legacy network game that didn't That's support right. internet play. We could. I'm, I'm down. Let's do it.
All right. So what are we thinking? Kind of Age of Empires, <laughs> there uh, we Halo, go. Rise of uh, Halo One. What... I'm down. <laughs> Thanks for throwing okay. me the phone, Nick. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right. Cool. But so, so great. I can ping your device. Although, yeah, latency is a thing for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But so for the maybe... purpose of, let's say, you wanted to use something like Wi Fi Explorer Pro, um, you yeah, could do okay. a scan of my environment and see you know, what the RF environment looks like. You could do uh, a remote packet capture using something like Airtool um, or even, you know, just Wireshark and, you know, it'd be a bit more manual uh, doing it directly in Wireshark. But, you know, you've got that local IP address now. You've got a Wi-Fi adapter yeah. in the WLAN Pi that can be put into monitor mode. So there's all sorts of things you could do remotely. Okay. So should we just test that one quickly? I fired up Wi-Fi Explorer Pro. This is my yep. local area Wi-Fi networks. Mm-hmm. And now in, in here, we go to preferences, sensors, I add a new sensor, and this is going to be that IP address. Give it a name. Add Jerry's house. Close that one down. And so now it's asking me for a username and password. Yep. So this would be norm- normally you could secure this more, but since this is a brand new install, it's just the default WLAN Pi, WLAN Pi. All right. Drum roll. Do we get Wi Fi scanning from Jerry's house? Tune in for the next episode for the stunning conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't have, I don't know if I have any Wi-Fi here. Do you think I have any Wi-Fi in this house? Probably not. Are you, are you lacking in Wi-Fi? Yeah, it's got a slow household. Maybe, he maybe slow internet, up, we know that. Maybe you'll pick up like the neighbor's hey. uh, Wi-Fi or something. I don't know. <laughs> a few, there's a few APs right. in, the, uh, in the area. So you've got, you seem to have an abundance of Aruba network, uh, Aruba <laughs> APs. Why. That's there. weird. That's Strange. weird. <laughs> Strange. There must be a lot of neighbors around here with Aruba. Uh, Jerry's gear. is that that heiress that ends in FD53 at the bottom of the screen. That's, <laughs> that's Jerry's. <laughs> All right. So and so now we're seeing the same results that you would. That's right. Very yeah. Cool. If I were to run Wi-Fi Explorer Pro locally here, I would be seeing the same results that you're seeing. But now you're able to do that remotely, and you know this could be a sensor that's left, you know, at a customer site to be able to you know, assist them remotely or check in on, uh, on issues um, or be able to validate changes are made, you know, um, without having to actually physically go to that site. Fantastic. Yeah, all sorts of uh, use cases. Obviously, this would be one use case for it. But yeah, so that's, you know, the, the, the purpose of this session was just to talk about really three different kind of ways of connecting to the WLAN Pi. Um, obviously, there's even more beyond this. You know, we could get into the, you know, connecting this to a Wi-Fi network and, and accessing it over the Wi-Fi side. But I think these are kind of the three most common use cases and hopefully kind of paint the picture of different ways that you could use this WLAN Pi, whether it be locally connected to an iPad or a, a laptop connected left behind at a local network and you're accessing it throughout the building or, you know, shipping it to a completely, you know, different part of the world, having them plug it that into the network and now you can access things remotely. Very cool. All right, Jerry, anything else you need to cover? Or do you think we should wrap this one up? I think we covered it all. I think that's good. All right. Perfect. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us, everybody, for this WLAMPI video. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. See ya. Bye now.